did you press the button, Will? I pressed the button this time, I swear. Hi there and welcome to yet another episode of Mysteries of the Unexplained. (laughs) Take 522. I am your hostess with the most patience in the world, Anne-Marie Gann, who is here to clarify yet another mystery of the unexplained that has plagued mankind since the dawn of time. And here is my good friend, well he was until five minutes ago when I realised that he's not able to press the big red button that says record. Hello, William. Homecoming Queen 1984, 1985, 1986, 1987, 1998, 1990, 1992, 1993, 1996, 98, 2001 and 2020. William O'Hanlon. So, guys, guys, this is not, and we're not even shitting you, right? This is the third time we went to record the podcast. The second time I said that, oh God, it went wrong on the first take and Will was like, oh my God, you're being so dramatic. Like, it was only two minutes. And then we were half an hour into recording the last one and Will had forgotten to press record. (laughs) In my defence, Roisin is off for the holidays and did not press the button or put a straw in my mouth to hydrate me. Roisin, please come back. I am sorry for all the HR disputes that there have been for me maybe calling you names and treating you abusively. I would do anything if you could come back and teach this man how to press a button on his computer screen. Hi guys, if you don't know us, you're very confused by now. If you do, you'd know us that this kind of thing does actually happen quite regularly. (laughs) It is my week to tell you a mystery of the unexplained and today our story is called Yikes. Which might have been funny the first time Will heard it, but now he's heard it 10 times over and he's not reacting at all. It wasn't funny the first time either. I didn't know what the fuck. I had no, I had no idea what, why you were, why it was a heading. Where would I? Maybe you wouldn't I do what, well at the Sunday World, you know that. You maybe wouldn't do I thought, well at making up headlines. Have you seen their headlines now? In fairness, well, I think I could mm. manage. If you had maybe even glanced over the fucking notes that I had sent you, you might have gotten the joke. Well, you got it now because here I go for the second time. Oh, we would like to say hello and thank you very, very, very much. We have thanked you twice already, Francesca, but you didn't hear either of them. Thank you, Francesca, our new Patreon for this week. I had said actually that I, I think you have Thanks, a beautiful Francesca. name. I think I might call our firstborn girl Francesca. But I digress from baby names to lizard people. Here we go. They are among us. Yes, they are. Blood drinking, human flesh eating, shape shifting, extraterrestrial, uh, 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 extraterrestrial, reptilian humanoids with only one aim in their cold blooded little lizard heads to enslave the human race. They are our leaders, our CEOs, our favourite Oscar winning actors and Grammy winning singers, and they're responsible, allegedly, the high profile attacks, including 9 11 and now COVID. They count among their number Queen Elizabeth, George W. Bush, Henry Kissinger, Bill and Hillary Clinton. Allegedly Clintons. Allegedly. You got a lot of money and a lot of lawyers. We don't need you coming after us poor little Irish people. (laughs) William is not available for comment. (laughs) Annie has left the country, aided by the lizard people. They are cold-blooded humanoid reptilians who have the power to shapeshift into human form. Tall, blood drinking, shape shifting reptilian humanoids from the Alpha Draconis star system are now hiding in underground bases and are the force behind a worldwide conspiracy against humanity. Well, so far, so normal. Well, it's nothing you haven't heard before. Like, you know about the dragon peeps, don't you? Yeah, I dated one before and you dated one as well. Um, so I Absolutely do. did date one. If you talk over me one more time, my lawyer is going to come down on you like an anvil on your head. Do you understand me? I was guaranteed airtime in my new contract. And if you're speaking over me, the public can't hear me. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? I think I might actually counter sue that there was the proviso in our original contract that thou shalt press the red button when we fucking record the fucking show. Now, Annie, you've done this before. You did it once before, so we're even Stevens now. Oh, he has to bring up the past ads. It's like the chicken burger. Continue. Oh. Mm. 
Can, no, you continue. I actually don't even know what I'm saying now. It is estimated that up to 12 million Americans could be persuaded or else firmly believe that this, my friends, is fact and not fiction. And people claim to have seen them. Not in their usual flesh suits marching into Capitol Hill or sitting in their LA offices counting their millions. No, as they really are in their, albeit rather scaly, flesh. One encounter comes to us from the National Cryptid Society, from a witness called Kelly in Honey Grove, Texas. Mm -hmm. She says on this evening she had put her daughters to bed as usual and was just lying down trying to fall asleep when her dog started snarling and growling in a very menacing way, as if they were very scared of something. Listening carefully, she could make out the snapping of twigs and her first thought was that her daughter's pony had gotten out of its enclosure. However, it would turn out to be something far stranger, as Kelly explains. My eldest daughter had a Shetland pony, so in my mind I thought the Shetland had gotten loose. I got up out of bed and I went to the front door. My front door had nine panes of glass in it. I'm very bougie. (laughs) Right across from the (laughs) corner. Right across the corner from me, 25 feet from me, was a street light, a very bright street light. What I saw walking across the street I will never forget. (laughs) I saw a lizard standing on two feet with its back to me. (gasps) It was just like looking at a chameleon. If it were blown up to seven feet. (laughs) And it's... Oh, do tell me more, Kelly. (laughs) She spoke over me again. Yeah. Okay. So you ring her lawyers and then... Yeah. So I just step away at this point. Just turn off the mic. Just... Yeah. Because she voided the contract twice. Okay. Oh, fine. I'll finish this episode, but I'm not doing any more with her. He had crossed the road. His tail was so long that it was still halfway in the road like a freaking brachiosaurus from Jurassic Park. He was grey like the Jurassic Park brachiosaurus. His arms, for lack of a better word, went between his hip and his knees. He was just nonchalantly walking across the street, right under the street light. Across the street from me were houses. Behind those houses was a sawmill which has no relevance at all to the story when I think of it. I was in shock. I had never seen or experienced anything (laughs) like this before in my life. My world was black and white with no grey. He never looked my way. I like to be a poet on the weekends and my husband thinks my words are absolutely gorgeous. And that keeps our marriage going. And I like to think it's flowing. You see, I ram all the time. Anyway, I never left the house. He put me in shock. I was totally in shock that night. As a matter of fact, I didn't go to sleep for the rest of the night. I just stood there looking out. I was looking at my front door long before and long after he had passed beyond my field of vision because I like staring at my front door. It's very pretty with those nine panes of glass in it. Then got ten. I like the number nine because it's like a a droopy dick. Mm. Kelly for that story that involved a lot of intricate detail about things that didn't really make oh, I'm back, Annie. Who did any I channel? difference to the Who story. Did channel? I'm back, sorry. Oh my God, Wade, it was amazing. You were Kelly. You were Kelly that had nine panes of glass and a sawmill behind houses, behind other houses, behind her house. But she saw a lizard person in the street uh, but she was looking out in the street way before the lizard came and way after the lizard came as she well. She sounds very nice actually. She was really nice. It was quite sexy I'd say. Mm-hmm. Another unbelievable report of some sort of lizard human comes to us from cryptozoology news from a witness in Oklahoma City. It's all down south, the shit is going on lads. The man claims he was a dispatcher and that on this evening he was driving on his way to work at about 4am when he saw something very strange come creeping up out of the night in the form of a three foot tall reptilian human. It was just a baby. I was coming off a two lane to a four lane. On my side of the road, there was a drain. Once again, I am a rapper. Mm -hmm. It the being jumped on the side of the road, standing on the curb, looking at me, bitch. 
It had large eyes, small pointed ears. Its eyes were orange with no glow when the headlights hit them. It had a small mouth with a nose similar to a cat. It had three coats. <laughs> It had three toes curled over the edge of the curb with heels just like a human. It sounds almost kind of sexy, but it wasn't. Extremely large thighs mm, that matched the base of its tail. Its tail was extremely long with huge base tapering down, no bigger than a man. <laughs> Sorry, I keep thinking of that lady who says that we do horrendous American accents. And I'm like, she's right. <laughs> the creature was flicking its tail, standing like an angry cat. I can't do it. But once it was on the move, it carried it straight out behind him. It looked as if it was calculating where it could make it across the road in front of me without getting hit. Suddenly I'm Irish and a woman. It made it to the centre yellow line, then looked again at me before sprinting off into the woods on the opposite side of the road. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now, all this is very, very terrifying. Like, if I saw a thing like that coming at me, I'd be like, hey, mm, what you doing with that huge tail? No, I would be scared. <laughs> I would be scared. But before you start to get really scared, maybe you should just stop and think that maybe these beings don't mean to frighten anyone. Now, we haven't gotten any evidence yet, Will, that they're actually malevolent, have we? They're just hanging around late at night. Yeah, they're just going about their business. They're what some people would call nocturnal. Uh, oh, oh, well done. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe they're mm-hmm. just going to the like, what do, what do they call it in the, in the States or in, in Australia? The bottle shop. They're going to the bottle shop. They're just they're just going to get like a few cans and smoke like a few fags and hmm. hang around. Like I don't think they're doing nothing wrong. Well, they work during the day and they like you know their time off is night. So yeah, they can. Do, they're not doing nothing. They're just coming out of a ditch. But sure, they could have lost something down there. Well, Barbara Lamb is a psychotherapist and family counselor from Claremont, California, who also happens to be a prominent researcher of crop circles and also a regression therapist for past lives her cv is absolutely jam-packed here now barbara she claims that one day a reptilian humanoid just seems to have randomly appeared in her house as you do although she is typically repulsed by lizard snakes and other reptiles lamb seems to have not been bothered by this six foot tall lizard man just standing there in her home she would say in an interview with vanity fair magazine I was walking through my home and there was standing this reptilian being. It was three in the afternoon. (laughs) I had only had two sherries and I was only a little bit one sheet to the wind. (laughs) I was alert and awake. I was startled. Somebody was there. He was radiating such a nice feeling. I went over and had my hand out. (laughs) He was taller than I, this close to me, with yellow reptile eyes. He said telepathically, <laughs> Oh, Barbara, good God. <laughs> now you know that we are actually real. We do exist. We do have contact with certain people. And then, like that, like, poof, he was suddenly gone. Tell me this, Barbara. Was the reptile, was he British as well? Just in the States on work or? Well, he looked like he was Tory anyway. He was very handsome. <laughs> well, we, we, I forgot to mention, we sat down for quite some time and went through the, the royal family, who we liked and who we didn't like. and they, Mm-hmm. Then after he had his dirty way with me, I mopped myself up and went on and made some dinner. Mm. <laughs> oh, Barbara, you dirty bitch. Well, you know, it's very fitting that you are British, Barbara, because the man himself who has um, been the king of these conspiracy theories about reptiles for years is indeed David Icke, which will now make my heading seem very hilarious to those of you that can remember back that you far. You can insert yeah. in a laugh track here, Annie. Well, it might have more life than you. David Icke first published his book, The Biggest Secret, in 1998. In it, Icke alleged that the same interconnecting bloodlines have controlled the planet for thousands of years. Yes, the book suggests that blood drinking reptilians of extraterrestrial origin have been controlling the world for centuries. 
and even originated the Illuminati. A fictitious, now I will say that in, you know, um, in where it was at quotation marks because it, it might be real, I don't fucking know. Gr- don't come for me, bitch. <sighs> Group of world leaders that conspiracy theorists say control the world. David Icke says humanity is actually under the control of dinosaur-like alien reptiles who must consume human blood to maintain their human appearance. So you have to drink our blood to, so that you can look like us and not turn back into the reptiles. Oh, so that's maybe the reptiles that were hanging around at night time then. They were just after running out of human blood. That's what happened. Mm. They were just on their way to the shop where you get the blood. Like, everything's okay here. Yeah. The transfusion place. They were just going to the blood bank. Yeah, they're going to the blood bank. Leave them alone. Some of its alleged clan. Now, I mean, uh, what I'm saying is these are reptile people, lads. Madonna, Katy Perry, Tony Blair, Donald Trump and Angelina Jolie, who is a particularly beautiful reptile, can I say. But how do people who believe in lizard people know when somebody else is a lizard person if they're not in their lizard flesh, i.e. is if they're like disguised as a human? Well, one of the top lizard personality journalists that calls himself Bump made a very useful list recently and this will alert us to lizard-like identifiers. And now Will will help me read this list of lizard person tells. If you see any of this in a person, they're definitely a fucking reptile. Number one, green eyes. Mm -hmm. Number two, good eyesight or hearing. Mm -hmm. Number three, having red hair. Number four, a sense of not belonging to the human race. Number five, unexplained scars on the body. Number six, a love of space. And number seven, low blood pressure. (coughs) Basically, Anne-Marie Bernadette Gann. (laughs) Well, I was going to say basically a load of Irish and Scottish people and they're just saying thank Mm. you very much. They forgot to put on the list... um, Claw hands. No, Will, this is when <laughs> this is when they're human. <laughs> they have normal, lovely, beautiful hands. Yeah, the person who gave them engagement ring says you have beautiful human like <gasps> hands, which are not bird like or reptilian like at all. Yeah but, yeah, but how does that explain you then? A brief survey on Ike's forums also point out physical features that are tells like having a smile where the bottom <laughs> teeth show you have that. Eyes that change size, you have that. Eyes with abnormally lo- abnormally sized pupils, you have that. You have all of those no, things. You do. You have a cock eye. You have a cock eye. No, Annie, no. No, Annie. The evidence and the receipts. Hands up in the courtroom if you had surgery on your jaw. <laughs> <laughs> Hands up if you go cross-eyed when excited and under the influence of alcohol. Annie Gant. Hands up if you have abnormally That's large sized pupils. That is a Annie goddamn Gatt. lie. Thank you. And that was GP case. prescribed medication. I have, you know, that was a fucking goddamn lie. I only have a cock eye sometimes when I'm really, really tired. But you are very tall. You're very sneaky, snaky. You f- you're very like, ooh, like blood pressure, like falling over kind of thing. That's like unsubstantiated. <laughs> that one, I just kind of made that up. You you don't have great eyesight. I don't know about oh. your hair and red hair. No, no, you're more mousy, shitty, non-colour. Not belonging to the human race. You probably don't, but I don't know anything about that. Unexplained scars. I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't want to look that close. Ew. What do lizard people want? They want world domination and they're not making any bones about it, right? So, you know, their manifesto isn't that big. It's two words. World domination. Where do lizard people come from? Now, this is highly interesting, David Icke, and thank you very much. Lizard people are thought to primarily come from the constellation Draco, though there are some theories that reptoids come from other systems like Sirius and Orion too. So Draco is basically the constellation that looks like a dragon, and its name in Latin is Draconum, which means huge serpent, so therefore, of course, they have to be from there. Like, things are very join the dots in this kind of theory of lizard people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder what kind of dots we, we present to them. Or what does our constellation look like then? But, but, but the Milky Way, isn't it? Well, yeah, but like, I don't know, I suppose we don't have a picture of it, do we? Just. Does it just look like a big chocolate bar? I don't know. We don't have a picture of the Milky Way from afar. No, because we can't get outside it, you lunatic. I know that. That's why I'm saying, Annie. Hey, hey, don't you. Hey, hey, 
Don't it's coming up to Christmas. Don't get ratty with me. Don't Anne. you take that tone with me or your Christmas present will be thrown to the lizards, bitch. Believers say that lizard people have been visiting Earth since ancient times and breeding with humans, which results in more lizard people and more humans with the potential to be lizard people. Ike even claims that lizards are behind secret societies like the Freemasons and the Illuminati. Hmm. For years, his mission has been to promote infinite consciousness. Um, But he actually started off as a footballer and then he got arthritis and he couldn't play football anymore. And then he went on a sports desk and he was reporting on the football. And it's kind of mad. Like, this is all very normal stuff. You'd think the chap was doing quite well for himself. But then he went on Terry. Mm. Then he went on Terry Wogan's show one night back in the um, like 80s and said that he was the son of God. And then people started Mm, thinking then. Yeah. Oh, little one now. If you were dating him, if you had started dating yeah. him and you were like, oh yeah, oh, good sports career, athletic, nice guy and nice guy all around and very personable on the telly and all the rest of it. And you were been going out with him for a few months and you were like, I think this is going really, really well. He's on Terry Wogan tonight. And then he comes out and he says he's son of the Godhead. Quotation marks. What would you, what would you do? Where would you be at then? What would you do then? Hmm. I'd probably just depending on the bank balance yeah. and how good he was in some areas of the relationship mm. I would make an informed decision based on that if it was the outcome was like I would just slowly slowly distance myself from him and then do a massive stage my own death <laughs> <laughs> because that type of behaviour could end up with you six foot feet under so you would have to go full on um missing yeah you would but I don't know Will I don't know if you'd be able to go missing from the lizard people do you remember Brian the reptilian that we that we did before we did a show on Brian the reptilian he was a lizard person and I mean that that poor girl he was going out with she tried to get away from him but he just kept reeling her back in with the big lizard Willie. he had a big he he was very good in the bedroom mm-hmm. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> <laughs> Notwithstanding the intense public derision that followed, Ike has since become a prolific author, lecturer and anti-hero of alternative media. But how on earth did he come up with this complex theory of how reptilians had not only invaded Earth, but that had also created a genetically modified lizard-human hybrid race called the Babylonian Brotherhood? By the way, they're busy um, plotting a worldwide fascist state and Barack Obama and Mick Jagger are also reptiles as well. And his most recent writings theorise that the moon is actually a hollowed out planetoid observation base from which the dragon lords observe us going about our lives. Mm. So it's it's kind of like Big Brother for dragons. Like our, our lives like are like Big Brother brother for dragons like they tune in to you every night like at about like half nine when you're finished work for the day and you sit down and you're going through grinder scratching your balls and eating peanuts like that's the Willow Hanlon show from half nine to kind of half ten yeah, don't you steal my time. joke on the original bed. recording Annie <laughs> no, no I had said that first. Annie stealing my material you don't have that recording Annie stealing you don't have that material. recording you don't have show me the receipts <laughs> Show me the receipts because you didn't press play on that recording. We all know. These beings are archons. No, 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 no. I want to say my joke. <laughs> no, my original joke was that maybe these reptile people are watching us like you'd said from the moon and that they sit down in their drakenoid planet and it's just like, oh, it's nine o'clock. Here, Big Foot Annie is on. Big Foot Annie's on. And it's just like... Her name is Annie and she's Big Fat Annie. Why don't we join and see what she gets up to today? Big Fat Annie. And it's just you going around and they don't know English so all they hear is and then that laugh and they're just like they all clap when you do the laugh. They're like yay Big Fat Annie, Big Fat Annie. Yeah. Well, they wouldn't be clapping because there'd be no laughing going on in your show because it's just you alone in your house with your thoughts. <laughs> These beings or archons are an ancient race of reptilian psychopaths who have hijacked our perception of reality in the manner of the film The Matrix. The archons have blinded humans to the real world, resembles that an avatar and are creating a dystopian society a la the Hunger Games. He adds that this inverted reality is being broadcast from the sun via the moon, which is hollow. Hmm... 
Like I think he lost a few people when he hollowed out the moon. <laughs> I think there was a few people that like kind of stayed with him with, through all the madness and look, well, I listen, I, like whatever. I will stand up for mm. David in in that there was a, some sort of experiment they did with the moon where they fired something at it and the moon did ring like a bell for quite some time. Bet you didn't know that, Annie. What? It rang like a bell? What? Yeah. Yeah. Look it up. Well, there's an idea Look for your next it show. Up, so maybe always, it is hollow. Always have to fucking spoon feed you. Um. Anyway, so it's hollow. They're all sitting in it. It's like they're watching telly and we're their Netflix. We're basically Netflix for lizard lads. Like, get with the program. Like, you know what's going on. So maybe tomorrow, when you're going about your normal day, do something for them. Like, don't just do your routine, like change the way you walk to work or go a different way or get a cappuccino instead of a latte or like text your ex-boyfriend, like fuck shit up. Because, you know, they threw in COVID there because we're not being exciting enough. Did I steal your joke again, Will? Yeah, you did. You know you did. Yeah. Yeah. You are terrible, Annie, for taking material. I tell you, you wouldn't last long on this, the comedy circuit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Why don't you do something exciting for the um for the reptiles tomorrow, Will? I might do. Why don't you go down to um Marks and Spencer's because they have uh they have deals on meals for one. Buy yourself a bottle of wine. Buy yourself a bunch of flowers. Bring it home. Having and go fuck go fuck yourself and go fuck yourself. How about you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Ike is a hard man to pin down he perceives Saturn's iconography in Katy Perry videos in the film Monsters Inc oh now they're taking Monsters Inc from us as well oh they're all yeah well they're basically saying they're reptiles anyway so we knew thank you the hand gestures of Jay-Z and Angela Merkel and fa- and oh lads I'm sorry to tell you this now. This is just, I just, I, I had forgotten. I must have blanked it from my mind that I put this at the very end of this piece of information that they say here that Ike has actually, through years of research, discovered that Santa is an anagram of Satan. And Christmas is cancelled. There is no Christmas of the year. There, there will be like lizard presents for everyone. And thank you for opening our eyes. <laughs> I think you need to get a carbon monoxide alarm for your mobile because I think that you might have carbon monoxide poisoning. And I know what kind of book I'll be getting for you for Christmas this year, Will, because he has written 20. And I think one of them would make an excellent present for you for this Christmas. What do you think about that? We could be millionaires if we wanted to be. We could just write a book on on this type of stuff. I know it's actually gas isn't it because um, I saw like there's loads of clips of him online because he does let people into his house he lives on the Isle of Wight he's lived there for years mm. and um, he says that he has he had this moment right that he went into a bookshop with his kid when the kid was quite young and the kid was like looking at books or something and I've, he heard a voice like this voice in his head that said look at the books on the other side of the shop and he went over there and obviously something that he looked at like let him started him off on this eventual rabbit hole that he would fall down and that's just it but it's really funny in his house when he asks this guy in because all of the books on his bookshelves are just his books did he also hear a voice saying two for one special by the till <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. Clean up on aisle five, please. Yeah, it's just so mad. Like, his books go into <laughs> such incredible detail about, like, where these guys are and where where they're from and all this. But I, I, I don't know where he's drawing any of his theory from. Like, I can't relate his theory to, like, there's some mentions of, like, do you know Madame Blavatsky, this kind of messer, this Russian messer that we covered a little while ago? Like, she she apparently heard voices from, um, mm. from like, a higher plane and wrote down this kind of stuff about a dragon race and like they say he's been influenced by stuff in Conan the Barbarian and all this kind of stuff like mystic kind of stuff but yeah like his stuff is so mad like that I I, I can't even I when you're reading it you're like where are you, are you just pulling this out of your arse or like where is the what's the theory here it's mm. just like madness but like a lot of people like I know people who uh, kind of believe that the royal family are lizards. Yeah, it's very common um, it's conspiracy theory. It's very common, and and Gemma Collins of um, 
the only way is Essex fame has just said that she is now a believer as well. Well, if the GC believes it, so do I. The GC believes it, babes. The GC believes it. So there you go. Will's getting a book um, from David Icke from Christmas. And by this time next year, we will just be doing a Lizards Only podcast. A thank you. And now, Will, bitch, I know, I know. I know that you've been waiting for this all week and we have had, I would say, I have said this before, but it keeps like being true that we've had an unprecedented response. Thank you, my people. Special questions, Christmas questions for William O'Hanlon this week. Thank you, my people. (laughs) Ask Willie anything. Hello there and welcome back to another Ask Willie Anything. Like, it's just been, I just, we're just going to have to go quick, Will, because um, people just can't, I don't know, they seem to think that you know things that they need to know. I don't know, but it's, it's beyond me. Melanie Livers writes in, if you had theme music just for yourself, separate from the podcast, what would it be like? Are you singing it? Oh, just just for myself. Um, oh God, it probably would be like... Taylor Swift song style Next Deborah Lake Deborah K. Lambert Finch says where is the Christmas album needed for the party (laughs) Deborah um, me and the label me and the label Deborah had creative differences so it's actually I'm going to go with a new label now and they're going to have my remixed original album out for next Christmas unfortunately it was just creative differences that kind of led that path to um, uh, fort in the road you know You'll have to wait another year, Debs, and I'm sure that he needs that year to get the old body in shape for the cover of the album that you see. You know, he needs to have himself looking as spramped. Sean Ellis says, is Wilhelm on Santa's naughty, nice or nice and naughty list? Oh, I'd say a sprinkling of nice and naughty, David. Oh, Ew. Mi- if- Miko Wavre. Ew! Um, Kyra May says, if you could rename anything, what would it be and what would you rename it to and why? Okay, so something that you need to rename. Like, I don't know, does Kyra think it's a silly name? I don't know. What what do you think? I would would change the name of television to Moving Picture Box. (laughs) (laughs) Or Magic Moving Window. That would be good. Oh! Wow. I got a new magic moving window. Oh, magic, magic moving window. That's actually beautiful. Like, yeah, TV actually yeah. shit now. Let's call it that from now on. Yeah. Esmeralda Gudgeonpin says Christmas pudding or Christmas cake. Oh, come here to me now. Neither of them. Mm. I hate fruit in <gasps> cake. It drives me up the freaking walls. Oh. It nearly makes me as mad as when Annie talks over me. It, that's how much anger it puts in me. Mac Heather says, if you were in hell, what would it be like? Mine would be eternally driving through the state of Virginia and never getting out while the radio only plays songs sung by children that can't be turned off. <laughs> that would be pretty bad. Um, my idea would be he- of hell would be um, on a Erin Road, Erin Irish Rail um, route um, from Waterford to Dublin um, where the train has to sit on the tracks um, between Kilkenny <laughs> um, at Thomastown and Kilkenny because something has happened and you get intermittent um, updates from the driver but the speaker is broken and all you get is hello everybody you, I, about 20 minutes I, you ready for you um, and you're stuck in the four seater part for the plate. The train is jammed, and um, you're stuck across the way from a man that is dying to have a conversation with you about football. And he doesn't know it yet, but you're a raven homosexual, and you don't know anything about sports. Not to stereotypical, not to be stereotypical, but I having a notion about it into the sport so there you go Will I agree with you it would be hell for that man also Kat Barnett says if you got vengeance on someone who wronged you would you rather watch the drama unfold from afar or would you want them to know it was you oh from afar I'm a sly little bitch 
Backstabber. Janique Leslie Calderon says, You're William Ship. What is your favourite Christmas movie of all time? Oh, that's a good one. Um, if like Christmas themed movie or Christmas movie, because they're very different things. Yeah, Christmas movie. I guess Christmas theme. Like I guess about Christmas. I don't know. Whatever you like. Oh God, I don't really have a Christmas themed favorite movie. I have to say, but. I do love when they bust out the Harry Potters at Christmas over oh, here. Oh, I love Jurassic it. Park. Oh, I love it. Yeah, oh, the Harry Potters. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're not particularly Christmassy, but they're always on a Christmas. I know what you mean. Tanya Middleton says, mm. have you ever thought of doing voiceovers or voice acting? You would be amazing. Oh, Tanya, I think that question was actually meant for my week. It's fine. Oh, Tanya. Just, just, <laughs> Tanya. Tanya, sorry, go on. Could you actually send that question in? Not next week, the week after again, please. Um, I, would, I would do it, but I don't think I have a very, uh, I don't think I have a voice that could fit in to be like a, a like to fit into mainstream advertisement. No, I don't think so either. David Mills says, Father Jesus Wilmus, Christ. what is your favourite Irish word or saying that you think the world should know about? I love it when you and Annie say, come here to me. Oh yeah, come here to me. Oh yeah, we do say come here to me a lot. Um, oh God, that's a tough one now. Uh, oh, for feck's sake. Yes, I do love her. Oh, for Feck's sake. <laughs> oh, for feck's sake is, is what your mother kind of says instead of oh, for fuck's sake, which is actually cursing. Vanessa Eberly says, what is your favourite Christmas song? Will you sing a little bit for us? Oh, OK. Um, my favourite Christmas song, because <laughs> it was burnt into my head, is uh, Destiny's Child. Um, on the eighth day of Christmas, <laughs> the baby said me. <laughs> Do you remember that? We both worked in this oh, workplace. Oh, I remember and they you used trying. To bust out. <laughs> I'll just wait until Annie stops talking there, lads. And you literally said Do you remember. Annie has to talk when I talk. I think she actually is a parrot on my shoulder. Or maybe I'm a ventriloquist doll. Maybe actually I've lost my mind and Annie is is the doll that sits on my lap and I do the voice for both. That'd be very weird. And no, we did work in a place um, where they used to bust out the Christmas songs and that was one of the songs that they used to bust out the whole time. And it was like that Destiny's Child song that I actually don't know the lyrics to except Beyonce just going, on the eighth day of Christmas, my baby getting me. (laughs) And then she would say something. <laughs> so that's it. Look it up. <laughs> oh no, it was, doesn't it feel like Christmas? Doesn't it feel like Christmas? It's so lovely. It's so lovely. <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> Boys, in my head. Oh, Amanda Longton says, why are the wealthy often the worst at tipping? Because that's how they got wealthy. A very good answer. Tip. Mm-hmm. Alison Schieffer says did you ever dye your hair and did the drapes match the garbage <laughs> <laughs> I am all natural in the hair colour department at present and have been for a number of years however I did once bleach blonde dyed my hair which was quite nice actually and then it was a grey kind of blonde but a grey toner which was nice for a while and uh, there is one instance in my life where I had a mental breakdown and I had a red panel in my fringe. <laughs> I remember. But it was more of a deeper red, not a vi- 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 vibrant red. And it was 2001. So give me a little bit of credit there. And it was uh, 20 years ago. I'm trying to make myself sound like I was 15, but I wasn't. <laughs> Absolutely no Oh, I would have been, yeah. Well, then, nope. I don't know. No credit will be given for that. Debbie Robertson says, Krampus or St. Nick, who would be in Will's stocking? St. Nick. Krampus, no, I'd be terrified, in fairness. Oh, sorry, can I talk now? Oh, beep, 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 be
scandal. Boop, 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 I'm going to head on. I'm going to head on. <laughs> This year, authorities discovered dozens of breeders had injected camels' heads and lips with Botox to make them bigger. Dubai, United Arab Emirates, Saudi authorities have conducted their biggest ever crackdown on camel beauty contestants that received Botox injections and other artificial touch-ups from the state-run Saudi press agency reported on Wednesday, with over 40 camels being disqualified from the pageant. Saudi Arabia's popular king, King Abdulaziz Camel Festival, which kicked off earlier this month, invites the breeders of the most beautiful camels to compete for some 66 million in prize money. Botox ingestions, facelifts, and other cosmetic alterations to make the camels more attractive are strictly prohibited. Oh <laughs> jurors, oh <my> de- <laughs> jurors decide the winner based on the shape of the camel's <laughs> heads, necks, humps, dress, back, postures. <laughs> Judges at the month-long festival in the desert northeast of the Saudi capital in Raya are escalating their clampdown on artificially enhanced camels. <laughs> the official news agency Mia. reported. What did you win? <laughs> Do you know what? what? I'm not surprise? even reading the rest of it. What There's some the Botox in the camels. What I'm the <laughs> I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm out of here. Oh, I have put up with so much abuse from you mean? this episode. I'm actually oh, gone. Oh, shut I'm up. I'm actually gone. Shut Maybe up. Maybe no, you, you should didn't. investigate. You should investigate a bit of camel Botox yourself. Yeah, for that big chip on your shoulder. Thank you so much for joining us. If you'd like to find out more, you can you can join our fabulous little Facebook group. You can join us at Mysteries of the Unexplained Podcast, where we will get you to answer some very serious and important questions before joining the group. You can find us on Instagram at Mysteries of the Unexplained Pod. If you would like to support us and give us the equivalent of a pint a month and we'll give you loads of free content, you can find us at patreon.com forward slash Mysteries of the Unexplained where you can sign up for our fabulous Motu Word Wednesdays where every week we will read out your grinds, my gears, complaints. You can complain about whatever you want. We really enjoy it. We might read it out on the show. Now, Will, is there anything you would like to say to the nice people at home? I would like to say thank you for your continued listenership Mm -hmm. and I am ever so grateful to each and one, every one of you and help me, please help me, please help me. They're shutting me off the air, they're dragging me (laughs) off. Help me, help me, help me. (laughs) Thank you so much. (laughs) Tune in next week for more Mysteries of the Unexplained. Explains, 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 explains.